Hello. I'd like to share something, the latest thing that's come to me, and that is in a recent video I spoke about how going to the sun was not an OBE experience. And I think a lot of times when we have these ideas about what awakening or enlightening is, we think it's supposed to be fireworks and bells and whistles. And indeed, sometimes that happens to people when they have one of these really intense kundalini rising things. Uh, David Icke is one that that happened to. Uh, there, there are any number of people who endure that. And it's not an easy way to go. Um, I'm not minding the incremental journey that I'm on. Uh, besides, things are changing so much and so fast these days, who can complain, really? Uh, if they changed any faster, maybe it would just be too much for our bodies. I think we do need to consider that. Okay, so um, I had never really thought of it before. I've been free to journey anywhere and everywhere and uh, I never just came out and said before it was not out-of-body travel but it's not been for the most part I that hasn't happened to me in a long while um, I've had a number of experiences with it uh, but mostly they were unintentional it's not something I've ever set myself to learn astral traveling although I have fun reading the adventures of people like, you know, the ultimate adventurer to me is Robert Monroe. Uh, you know, just everything fine, everything you want in an adventurer uh, we find in him. And he blessed us by leaving books and recordings and thoughts and ideas behind for us. And so all of that's fun, but that's not what my heart journeying is about not what it's like. That's kind of a distracting thing and when you're out of your body you're not necessarily tuned into your heart whereas when I take off from heart it's a heart-centered journey all the way. Um, I don't know that it can be explained maybe that's enough but when we recognize that everything out there is really inside of us, that's one way to come at it. There are many ways to come at it if you have a flexible perspective. Another way to come at it is that you're in superposition everywhere. Your consciousness, you're not a body. A body might be locatable in time space, you know. Uh, you can use your XY grid for time and space and, and you can find at any point in time where the body is. That, so what? That's not you. I mean, you've got lots of bodies running around, dear. Think about it. Think about all those other incarnations. And if all time is only now, then, then all that's going on right now. And your own higher self is indeed quite the juggler. You know, keeping all those balls up in the air and running and rolling and everything going right in just in each life. Just right. Righter than we can generally see from the perspective in 3D. Now, I don't say we're limited to 3D anymore. I don't know if we ever were. It's a recent discovery for me within the last 12 months that we're actually multidimensional right here while we're in 3D. Our consciousness uh, goes into higher dimensions so I don't know maybe I mean if we're everywhere at once that's one thing but then you've got the one body the one life experience that you're looking at here and it's on multiple dimensions all at once too and the way I used to think of that is that I was separated off from them that that wasn't my experience. That might be me, but it wasn't consciously accessible to me. I don't know anymore. You know, each time we have a new experience, it kind of does an adjustment number 
on what we thought was real, on the way we thought things worked. And who knows, maybe even the way things work could be changing in the midst of all this change we're going through. Uh, in reality, you are completely unlimited when you're in heart. As soon as you step into heart awareness, as soon as you vocalize your attention there and just kind of settle down and just be with it, you're no longer in time space or you're, you're in it, but you're not limited by it. To be in heart is to step out of time, to have any time accessible to you at the speed of thought, which is faster than the speed of light, and to have any space accessible as well, especially one that you've already visited, let's say in this lifetime. Um, it's much easier to quote unquote go there because you are there, all time just being one. I thought it was really neat one time, um, and I'm forgetting where I read it and who was doing the speaking. It might have been in one of Patricia Corey's books, uh, the Syrian trilogy that she wrote, where they described from a higher dimension looking at us what they saw. And they didn't see us at any one particular point in time. They said they saw us more like a long snake with each moment of time being one section of the snake. And so throughout the whole entire lifetime, you know, you could look at time and your experience through time this way, you know. So things are not what they seem. And the more we come to accept this and open up to the possibility that the way we think things work isn't necessarily the way they work, I think that opens the doorway to having such adventures. Um, in my earlier work, you'll find where I even shared uh, my meditation documents. And uh, to me, it always turned into an adventuring. As soon as I'd come up with a new idea, um, and back then the idea that I was everywhere in time space was new, I would want to expand out into it okay, if I'm everywhere, that means I can contain the earth, and I'd start there. And if I can contain the earth, then I guess I contain the solar system. And so I would want to partake of this, participate in my conscious awareness, and so I would expand out into it. This is where now and again I was greeted by one celestial being or another. They are not objects. They are fully conscious beings and you're not less than them either so none of this more than less than stuff there's none of that in heart everything just is and there's an awesome ultimate equality uh, imagine if one cell in your body wanted to claim that it was more you than another cell hello you know there's that old joke where all the organs in the body are, are fighting and arguing amongst themselves who's the most important. And uh, the anus hasn't piped up and had anything to say. It just lets them all go on arguing. And then it just shuts up. I mean, it shuts up tight. And pretty soon they're all admitting, okay, Mr. Anus, you're it, you're it. We couldn't very well function without you doing what you're supposed to be doing. Now, okay, maybe that's a little off color, but it's also fun. And it's very innocent fun. So uh, you're already there. Maybe that's the secret, my friends. If you can accept that you're already there. See, it's, it's getting away from this idea. These are the kind of adventures I undertook to help free me from the idea that I was the body or that I was the mind and that I was limited in any way. And it was a lot of fun. And I hope a whole lot more people start journeying out more into their greater awareness. I mean, if you're already there, then it's just a matter of moving the focus of your consciousness there and meeting yourself. I'm just imagining it now, everybody out and about through the, the solar system and the galaxy and, and having loads of fun. Go for it, folks. Why not?